Hello everyone, my name is Anna. I'm a yoga teacher and I've been asked to make a little video for you today that's introducing you to yoga. Um, and yoga is great because it gets you to move your body a bit, but you can do it at home. And you don't need much, you can do yoga with a yoga mat, but you can also do it um, on the floor that's quite firm. Um, you might want to lay down a, a towel if you're practicing on a hard surface. Um, something that will allow you not to slip for you to kind of have grip on your feet on your hands. But apart from that, you can kind of do it anywhere. And it's really great for your body to move. And it's also really great for your mind. Like it helps clear your head um, and it helps with mindfulness and mindfulness practice as well. So um, yeah, all you'll need is a sort of clear space you can practice in, a floor that isn't too slippy, but it's also not too hard. So maybe a towel down, something that can pad your knees when you're kneeling. Um, and then clothes that you can move in. So anything that's comfortable to move in, leggings or joggings or even pajamas are fine as well. Um, and then once you're all set up, you come and find a seat and that's where we'll begin. We're gonna start just breathing. So you're gonna come and find any comfortable seat. I like to sit cross-legged, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable. And you wanna make sure that your weight is even. So you're sitting on the kind of center of your sitting bones and that your spine is long, so the crown of your head is reaching away. And the first thing we'll do is just close down your eyes and begin to notice your breath. So you're noticing, where can you feel your breath? Maybe in your nose, maybe it's more in your chest. You're noticing how your breath feels today. So it might feel quite smooth, quite easy or it might feel a little bit more constricted or ragged. And just sitting, paying attention to your breath as a mindfulness practice, really useful. So what we're gonna do is start to elongate the breath. I want you to try and count it. I want you to think about inhaling for a count of four. I want you to think about drawing the inhale up from your belly. So I mean you kind of send the inhale down into your belly, inflate your belly before it comes up into your chest. And then I want you to think about exhaling to a count of six. And the exhale can be really smooth, like a slide that you're just sliding down. So we'll begin inhaling, inflating your belly and letting the breath rise up, count of four. And then exhaling, smooth, count of six. And then inhaling again, count of four. And then exhaling, count of six. Keep that going, inhale. Exhaling. Then again. Exhaling. Then again. Exhaling. Then again. Exhaling. You can keep that breath going for a couple more rounds. And what you're doing when you elongate your exhale and smooth out your breath in this way is you're just turning your body into its parasympathetic nervous system. So it's basically that your body is telling your mind that everything's okay. Taking you out of fight or flight mode and into rest and digest restore mode. So this is a really good breath to practice if you're ever feeling overwhelmed or panicky or anxious. Just counting, watching the breath, and counting the exhale longer than the inhale. And you can release the count now and just sit for a moment and notice if there's any effect from having breathed in that way. And there might not be, sometimes these things take practice. And then again, take a moment to find your sitting bones heavy, the front of your head reaching away, and let your shoulders release away from your ears. And you can breathe however is natural. 
just noticing the effect of all that. And then flick your eyes open if they're closed. We're going to take a twist. So you can bring your right hand to your left knee, your left hand behind you. And before you do anything, think about lengthening through your spine, so sending the ground of your head up, inhaling, and then on an exhale you twist, and you go lower back, mid back, upper back, twisting around to the left, breathing. And you might notice that as you exhale, you can move a little bit more into the twist. Come back through centre on your next exhale. And then again, inhale, find length through your spine. Bring your left hand to your right knee, your right hand behind you. And then on an exhale, you move. So lower back, mid back, upper back. It's like your spine's a spiral staircase and each sort of flight of stairs is the next part of your spine moving around. And then you're just breathing in the twist. Letting your exhale gently move you into it. Let your next exhale bring you back through center. And again, just find length through your spine, send the crown of your head up. And then come forward onto hands and knees, so tabletop position. So your hands are underneath your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. And we'll just start with some cat cow movements. So on an inhale, you send your tailbone away, your chest moves forward. On an exhale, you round your tailbone in, chin towards chest. And you can just move and breathe like this. Inhale, sending your tailbone away, your chest forward. Exhale, rounding your tailbone in, chin towards chest. And you're just moving, waking up your whole spine. And then come back to tabletop again. We're going to do melting heart pose. So this is a really good position if you spend a lot of time at a computer or sat down. So you keep your hips above your knees and you walk your arms forward. And they can be quite wide apart from each other if your shoulders are tight. And then your heart, your chest is trying to melt to the ground. Your forehead can come down. You can also bring a pillow to your forehead if that's more comfortable. So this is melting heart pose. And it's a big stretch for your shoulders, so it's a big release. So you want to send your breath into your shoulders. And then start to walk your hands back towards you hands underneath your shoulders and you can just do a couple of rounds of cat cow to let that movement go from your body. So inhale to go forward, exhale to round in. A little more like that. And then from tabletop, you're going to step your right foot back, curl your toes under. Step your left foot back, curl your toes under, so you're in plank. And then from plank, bend your knees, send your tailbone up, downward dog. So for downward dog, you're pressing through your hands and you're pressing through the balls of your feet. And you can have a bend in your knees, you don't need to straighten your legs. And you're gonna send your sitting bones, your, your bum up towards the ceiling. And again, a big stretch for your shoulders. So breathe here in downward dog. And if you want, you can pedal your feet. That feels quite nice to stretch out, wake up your legs. And then find a little bit of stillness in the downward dog. Press your hands down, lift your sitting bones, your heel up. And then tiptoe your feet towards your hands. And forward fold. So your feet are planted, there's a bend in your knees and your torso, your spine is relaxing over your legs. On your next inhale, bring your hands to your shins and extend your chest till it's parallel to the ground, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. And then on your next inhale, stand into your feet and reach your arms up. Look at your fingertips. Stretch through the whole of your body. 
And then exhale, draw your hands through heart center, Tadasana Mountain Pose, which is just standing, standing pose. So you're planting the soles of your feet to the mat, and you're going to be on the center of your foot, so much like for your sitting position, you find that comfortable seat, the center of your sitting bones, you're in the center of your foot, and the crown of your head is reaching up. I'm going to teach you a little sun salutation flow. So this is something that hopefully will be quite easy to remember, and you can do whenever you feel like you need to move your body um, through your head. It's quite a good pose for uh, quite a good series for that. So it begins in Tadasana Mountain Pose, really long through your spine. And then you inhale, you reach your arms up and stretch. And exhale, you fold over your legs. Hands to your shins on the inhale, halfway lift again, so spine goes parallel. And then exhale, fold, plant your fingertips and step your right foot back, so back. And then lower your knee and inhale, reach your arms up. And this is called low lunge or anjaniyasana in Sanskrit in yoga. And you can either have your back toes curled under if that feels more steady, or you can get the toenails of your back foot. And your front knee, you want that over your front ankle, so there's 90 degrees in that front leg, 90 degree angle. And then your pelvis, this big sort of area of bone here is really steady. So you can imagine it's a bowl of water and you don't want the water spilling out one way or the other. And then you're sending the front of your head up and your arms and your chest lift. And then from here, if that all feels okay, you can sink a little bit into your hips so you're opening out the front of your right thigh and lift your chest a little bit forward and up and breathe. Let your next exhale plant your hands to the mat, lift frame your front foot and step that front foot back so you're on your knees. And then lower your chin and your chest to the floor. On an inhale, slide your body through and come to cobra. So for cobra, your hands are underneath your shoulders and you're sending your chest forward, up and back, pressing into your hands, keeping your pelvis heavy, but lifting your chest up. And this can be really small, you don't have to make this big. And then exhale out of cobra, Curl your toes under, via your knees, push to downward dog again. So again, with downward dog, you're pressing your hands into the mat, you're pressing the balls of your feet into the mat, and you're lifting your sitting bones up. On your next inhale, lift your right foot up. So three-legged dog, right foot lifts. And then you're going to step or walk it in between your hands. And it's fine if you can't step it right in there. If you need to shimmy it in there, that is fine. Lower your back knee down and inhale, reach up. Anjani Asana, low lunge on the other side. So again, going through that checklist, front knee is over front ankle. You're on the toenails of your back foot or those back toes are curled. Your pelvis is steady. Your core is hugging back towards your spine a little bit. Arms and chest lift. And if that all feels okay, you can think about sinking your hips and lifting your chest a bit. Breathing. Your next exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, curl your back toes under and step that back foot forward, forward fold. So both feet together, crown of head reaching to the ground. On an inhale, bring your hands to your shins, extend your chest halfway. On an exhale, you fold. Your next inhale, stand into your feet, lift your arms, reach and stretch, look at your fingertips. And then on an exhale, fold all the way down again and we'll do the other side. Hands to your shins, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, pull, plant your fingertips, left foot steps back, lower your knees, you go left back this time. And then again, right through the checklist. So front knee over front ankle, 90 degrees in that front leg. The toenails of your back foot, your pelvis is steady, your core is engaging a little bit, your arms and your chest lift. And if it feels okay, you sink your hips, you lift your chest up and breathe. And then on an exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, step your front foot back so you're on your knees, and then bring your chin and your chest to the mat. And then slide through on an inhale, come to cobra. So your pelvis is heavy, your hands are beneath your shoulders, your chin and your chest will lift up, leg through your spine. And then on an exhale, via your knees, come to downward dog. Again, grounding through your hands, through the balls of your feet, lifting up your sitting bones. It's like you're trying to send your sitting bones right up to the ceiling. Breathe. And then on an inhale, lift your left foot up, three like a dog. And then on an exhale, set or walk that foot in between your hands. Lower your back knee down. And then inhale, reach up, Anjaniyasana on the other side. 
So front knee over front ankle, toe nails back foot or toes curled under. Steady pelvis, core lightly engages, hugs back a little bit, arms and chest lift. And if that feels okay, sink into your hips a little bit, lift your chest a little bit and breathe. On an exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, curl your back toes under, step your back foot forward and fold over both legs. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Stand with your feet, inhale, reach and stretch all the way up. Look at your fingertips. And then exhale, draw your hands through heart center and pause. So you pause into Dasana. That was one round of sun salutations. So you can just take a little moment and let that settle. Find your breath if you got it out of control. We'll do that little flow again together and we'll try and do it so we're breathing and moving at the same time. So turning it into a breath to movement flow. So you begin into that the mountain pose, feet grounded, crown of head lifts. Inhale, reach your arms out and up, look at your fingertips. Exhale, fold all the way down, fold over your legs. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway lift, chest is parallel. Exhale, fold over your legs again, plant your fingertips and your right foot step back, you lower that knee. Your inhale reaches your arms and your chest up and Janiyasana. And you can take a full breath here, planting through your feet, lifting through your arms. Your next exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, your front foot steps back, and you, you move your chin and your chest to the ground. Inhale through to cobra, so your chest lifts, you press into your hands. Exhale, downward dog. Take a couple of rounds of breath in downward dog. If you want to pedal your feet, do that. Your next inhale, rise your right foot to the ceiling. And then exhale, step it through in between your hands, lower your back knee. And then inhale, reach up, and the ass the other side. There we go. That's good. Feet are planted, chest lifts, breathe. And then on an exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, your back foot steps forward, you fold over your legs. Hands to your shins at the inhale. Exhale, fold. Stand into your feet, inhale, reach and stretch. And then exhale, fold all the way down and we'll do the other side. Hands to your shins, inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold, plant your fingertips, left foot steps back this time, lower your knee. And then inhale, reach your arms and your chest up, and Kiyasana. Planting into your feet, lifting your arms and your chest, breathing here. Your next exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot, front foot steps back, chin and chest, lower down. And then inhale through to cobra. Lifting your chest. And then exhale, downward dog. Taking a breath in downward dog. You want to pedal your feet to that or you can be still. Inhale, the sole of your left foot reaches up. Exhale, step or walk that foot in between your hands. Lower your back knee down. And then inhale, reach up, hands in the asana. Planting your feet, lifting your chest, breathing. And then exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot. Your back foot steps forward, you fold over both legs. Hands to your shins, inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. Stand into your feet. Inhale, reach and stretch. Look at your fingertips. And then exhale, draw your hands through heart center. Pause, breathe. So that's us done two rounds of sun salutations. And sun salutations are really instinctive. It's just a lift and a fold, a lift and a fold. So if you get that in your body and your mind, you can do it any time, as many times as you want. Okay, from here we'll just go into a balancing pose. So we're going to come into tree. So again, you want to find Tadasana, the soles of your feet planted, the crown of your head lifting. And push your hands towards each other in a heart center. So it's not just aesthetic, it'll help you keep your balance. And then again, finding the length through the crown of your head and hugging your navel back towards your spine a little bit. And then put your weight into your left foot and pick up your right foot. And you can bring your toes to the mat, your heel to your leg, or you might lift it up so that, that your right foot is meeting your calf, or the, all the way up so that your right foot is coming into the inside of your thigh. 
And then wherever you're at, you're pushing your foot into your leg, your leg back into your foot, and you're sending part of your head up and you're breathing. So if you can here, try and steady out your breath. Maybe even count it again. And finding something to stare at really helps. It'll help you keep your balance. So just trying to be steady, trying to breathe and treat. And from here, if you want, you can bring in some arm variations. So you might send your arms up, or you might even challenge your balance and wave your arms around a little bit. And this is really good for the muscles in that left leg for your proprioception, your sense of balance generally. So whatever you want to do, arm-wise, you can do that now. And then release your right foot to the ground and you can have a little wiggle, let that go. And then from Tadasana again, you transfer your weight to your right foot and you pick up your left foot this time. And again, Heel can come to your ankle, toes can stay totally on the mat. Some days are just not a balancing day. Or the sole of your foot can plant the inside of your calf or your thigh. And then you're pressing your standing foot into the ground and lifting the front of your head up. Now you're trying to open your left knee out. And again, staring at something can help you keep your balance. Pressing your hands together can help you keep your balance. So you might play with arm variations again on this side. And it may be that you find one side is actually a lot harder than the other, which is really normal. But whatever you're doing, just steady out your breathing. You're trying to find a bit of centre, a bit of calm, even when you're doing something challenging. And then you can release that left foot to the ground and if you want you can shake out your hips a little bit just let that go and then inhale reach your arms all the way up and exhale fold all the way down over your legs and just take a moment in a forward fold a bend in your knees the front of your head is reaching out and then crouch into your feet and come and sit on your bum and roll your spine all the way down to the ground so from here, we'll just do one bridge. So the soles of your feet are almost, but not quite in tickling distance of your hands and your pelvis is really heavy. You inhale like this and then on an exhale, you lift your pelvis up and then you can keep your hands down by your side or you might snuggle them underneath you, clasp your hands together and send your fists into the mat. And what you're trying to do is open up the front of your body. So you're sending weight over your feet and lifting your pelvis up towards the ceiling and your glutes are working to support this. And breathe. Let your next exhale release you to the ground. But think about bicycle wheeling, one vertebra at a time, your spine back to the mat. And once you land, just let your pelvis be really heavy again. So just take a moment here. And then you might want to curl your uh, knees in towards your chest and rock a little bit side to side, just totally releasing your lower back to the mat. And then plant the soles of your feet to the mat, let your arms come out to the side. We'll finish with a twist on both sides. So let your knees fall to the right, let your head turn to the left. And you're just going to lie in this pose and again breathe. And think about counting out your breath again. So inhaling to count of four, exhaling to count of six, inhaling four, exhaling six. And keep breathing like that a couple of rounds of breath here. And then engage your core a little bit, bring your knees back through centre and then let them fall the other way to the left, head turns to the right. And again, you're breathing, counting your inhales four, counting your exhales six.
And you can close down your eyes and just relax. And then again, you're engaging your core a little bit to bring your knees back to center. And again, it might feel nice to have your knees in towards your chest and not your lower back across the mat. And then to finish, just come and lie on your back. So send your feet away from you, let your arms come out by your side. And I'll sit up so you can hear me, but stay lying down, body heavy. And all you're doing here is totally releasing into the mat. So you can scan through your body, maybe starting at your feet. And breathing. And just noticing any tension. You're just asking it to release, to go away. And then moving your attention to your legs. And then moving your attention to your pelvis, that big booty bowl. And then you move your attention to your belly. And then to your chest, your ribcage. To your arms. And your hands. And finally to your skull. And just letting your whole body sink into the earth. And that's where I'll leave you at the end of this video. You can just remain lying here for however long you like. Resting, breathing. Thank you so much, guys.